you do. <laughs> but I was a bit agree with him. Yeah. It's a hell of healthy going. Get out of your shot here. Oh, that's fun, sir. I thought you looked a little trimmer. Just because I got a little bit of a Okay. Summer, summer weight. Oh, I'm tired. Well, mm -hmm. you, you go through six hours with them, and then you apparently got together with them again. No, I actually have some uh, very interesting material to talk to you about. Both. Middle East part. And, uh, so, well, uh, here's another traveler home from the from the outer world. Uh, good to see, see you. Yeah. Uh, back. The, uh, I meant to say in passing that the Israelis uh, they think you're the greatest thing that ever happened to. They don't want any fights with you about Bitburg or anything else. They think on the whole, as it worked out, there was more attention paid to the Holocaust than what it meant than if things hadn't uh, developed the way they did. They have to make their statements about the SS. And in a sense, they wish you hadn't gone to the cemetery, but they're on your side. They don't, they don't want all this to do. I wish the American press could find that out. But the American <laughs> press has taken a steady drumbeat that the whole thing was a failure. Not just Bitburg, the whole trip, summit and everything. Yeah, well, Shamir particularly was just flat out that uh, from the standpoint of all of their concerns about the Holocaust, and that uh, it was uh, it dramatized the concern. Yes. Hello. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. Yes. Hello. Different things, yes. <laughs> 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 
kind of a failure. And yeah, we, felt, we all felt very good about it. They were emotional. Emotional words that he said. I was almost crying. You would Thank you very much. Well, listen, there's a lot of things to congratulate you on. The progress and democracy that you've made down there. Your country and all that you've achieved. And I can also at the same time Thank you for your courageous support of our attempt at peace in Nicaragua and for supporting the embargo. We're, we're most grateful for that. And uh, since you're meeting with our Congress, anything that you can uh, do to help us along, we're going to try again to get the aid to, <laughs> to the countries. And, uh, well, they we need to know that the right. countries are, the freedom fighters down there are putting pressure. On that gun. There's been a little change of sentiment up there since Mr. Ortega's visit to Moscow. They, they thought so that was a good 20 of the Democrats are changing. The what? 20 of the Democrats are changing. That's position, not right? understand that, that, that trip kind of did things for them. Well, and have not followed peaceful policies toward their neighbors. President Duarte has much to be proud of. The recent successful election and the indisputable improvement in the human rights climate in El Salvador are due in no small part to his efforts, hence Nicaragua. And I assured him that we will continue our efforts to thwart communist aggression and subversion in the region. Peace will not be possible in Central America until Nicaragua ceases. The United States will continue to working with President Duarte to build peace, prosperity, and freedom in his own land and to bring stability throughout Central America. It's been a it is all concerned, and I agree that peace is obtainable in Central America as we draw the line on Marxist totalitarianism. totalitarianism. I assure them all of my unwary support to democratic peaceful changes based on a strong and healthy economy which we will work to build in close partnership with private enterprise. Of the two Central American revolutions of 1979, ours has succeeded as Nicaragua has been betrayed. The censor every day down to a few lines. I have assured President Reagan of our support of his purpose to stop the spread of foreign ideologies and thank him for his continuing and stimulating knowledge of our efforts. You're okay, just don't go too far. Thank you very much. I think that's good. I'm going to Just enough. Yeah, we have 
much the time. Yeah, and I book for a meeting in about 15 minutes with the young man. Mr. President, I know you, you've got a short amount of time, and I, I want to say that we all appreciate you taking it. Yeah. You know, it, it was awful nice of Holmes to call you and arrange for this thing. The reason we're here is for two things, really. I try to convince you, very <coughs> frankly, that the results of the tax reform, specifically with regards to depletion and intangibles, mostly intangibles, if they're passed the way we understand they're talking about now, the two or three year charge off, is going to result in a catastrophic decline in exploratory drilling in the United States. And that flies in the face of the information that you have, where everybody says, well, maybe 25 or 30 percent decline. But the entire industry, majors, independents, Harrington can tell you this, your secretary can, the people are going to shut down the drilling efforts. The smaller producers cannot stand it. They can't bank the industry right now with any bank if they could. They can't afford to pay their taxes and not charge off the wells. They'll go out of business. These gentlemen can all speak for themselves. You've known my grandfather for a long time in California. We've been in the business 50 years. Whether we can maintain an activity that would be maybe 20% of what it used to be, I question. I think when you get that low, I think you finally shut it down. Now, Senate, 